Hi guys, my tutorial for using epoxy resin on guitar pedals. Um, this is the way that I have settled on doing it. Before I go into that, just want to apologise for my um, rough appearance. The wife has ducked out with the kids, so I want to get this video uh, rolling while I've got the chance. So what is epoxy resin? There's, it's got a number of names. Uh, in America, I believe it's called Envirotex, and I think you can get it from Walmart in America. In Australia, it is, well, it's still called epoxy resin or whatever, um, but you can get it from, uh, I got these from Art Riot, small bottle, I think it was about $25 or $30, not cheap, but does go a long way. I've probably done about 10 pedals and I've only used up half of the, uh, of the, of the liquid. So it does go a long way in that respect. Um, you can also buy it from Bunnings. Apparently someone said that you can get it from Bunnings, which is a hardware store in Australia. And I'm sure you can get it from different places in Europe and things like that. You just have to talk below if you need any information. Um, let people know where you can get it from. Uh, if you know, if you're, if you're in America or, or Europe, you want to let the viewers know where you can get it from, just leave a comment below. I'm sure it will help them out a lot. So we're going to we're going to do an epoxy job on two pedals that I have. These are the ones um, that I was showing in the painting tutorial, which I've hand painted, um, and I'm going to immortalise those with resin because this stuff this stuff dries uh, cures very hard. It's like rock when it's done. It's very it's very good stuff. There are a million different ways to do this and everybody has settled on the way that they find the best. Um, this is the way that I, this is the way I'm happy doing it with. I know there's more complicated and more fancy ways of doing it and you know, they, 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 would, they would look better than the way that I do it. Um, but I think this is the best way to do it for me because there's a couple of, there's a couple of reasons. The first one is that it's, it's not very messy. This stuff is really messy. The way that I'm going to show you how to do it is not messy at all. It's 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 quite it. You you almost won't even drip anywhere. It's 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 good, and it has 90% of the good looks with only 10% of the effort. It's very simple to do. Even if even if you want to eventually um, do a more complicated way of of epoxy resining a guitar pedal. Do this way first, just so you can get the idea of how to mix and and what you need to do. Um, give this go, give this a go first, and then and then get more complicated as you go along. I think this is a good, this is a very good beginner method as well. But this is the method that I'm going to do from now on because, like I said, it's quick, it's clean, and it has and it has majority of the good looks without majority of the complications. So in case you've never seen a epoxy resin job before, I've shown this in some of my later videos because this is what I've been doing to my pedals lately. As you can see, it's like a sheet of glass on the top of that. It looks fantastic. It's the best gloss job and that includes powder coating. I've done powder coating before and that looks very good. This takes it to a new level and I believe it's worth the extra effort. It just makes your pedals, the, the, the artwork on the front and the whole package just pop. Um, that, that it's like glass. It's just it's just spectacular. It's just wonderful. I I, I love it. So um, I persisted to try and get something that would work for me, and, and this and this does. So that's probably enough talking. Let's get into it, and I'll show you what you need to do. <clears throat> you can drill before or after. I believe I've always drilled before though, uh, before I've put the epoxy on. So I'm not sure what will happen if you drill after you may damage the um, epoxy on the front. I've always drilled before, so I'm not sure about that. Um, but yeah, um, I guess just drill before and then you'll be fine. One thing you need to take, to take note of, I actually did this one recently and I forgot to tape the drill holes. And as you can see, when you get the light on the right angle, it's got sort of like a um, sinkhole. That's where the epoxy's just ran down the drill hole. So you need to tape all your drill holes um, so that and and you'll just f pretty much just fill it up. Um, just keep spooning it on until it fills up. So you just fill up all those all those drill holes, and then you won't get the sinkhole 
that sinkhole look. It, it ends up being perfectly flat. I've done it before and it looks good. Um, so yes, that's what we need to do. So 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 tape up your. I just use electrical tape for that. Um, just tape them up, and then we. Well, you're probably going to want to put it on something when you're actually doing this, just in case you get drips, because it is very messy and it's almost impossible to clean up. You'd almost be better off waiting for it to dry and then trying to clean it up because it's just so messy. It's it's really sticky stuff. Um, so you just got to mix one part of each. Uh, one part resin, one part hardener, as it says on the front, resin and hardener. Um, and you need to do this relatively accurately, otherwise it will take a very long time to set. If you do stuff it up and your epoxy job's not setting, leave it in the sun because apparently the uh, UV from the sun will accelerate the hardening process. And that's actually what happened with one of my pedals, this one. It was soft for so long and it might be a reason why it turned out quite rough. Um, but it did end up hardening. I mean, that's hard now. It's not. It, I, I was pushing on it and it felt like soft, you know, soft plastic. But it's it's hard as a rock now. Um, so you can do that. So just in case you have trouble with it, that's what you can do. So that's an earlier one. As you can see, um, this is a later one. You can see that I've done a better job. And I'm going to tell you the secret right now. Don't bother epoxying the sides. That is the secret. Well, it's not a secret as such. Oh, look at that. Knob just fell off. I have to tighten that up. I think I took it off and put it on another pedal and I forgot to tighten it back up again. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's not a secret as such, but it is the best way to do it, particularly if you're new. We're actually only going to be epoxying the top. And you can see, you might be able to see now, you may not have noticed, but around the edge there's a tension mark because that's where the epoxies sort of it sort of pulls itself to the edge it's a self flattening self leaven leveling um, uh, solution or whatever you want to call it so it will it'll flatten out I haven't done the sides because the sides are powder coated you don't need to protect them and I mean particularly in the case of this blue one it's already shiny as it is it doesn't need it on the sides you could you avoid so much complication when you don't um, epoxy the sides it's really hard to do. It drips, and it's very, very time-consuming. So I've settled for doing it this way: just the top, and don't worry about the sides. And it's it's only 10% of the mess, trouble, and effort. I'll show you how we're going to do it now. Let's give it a shot. So um, we're just going to mix one part of this and one part of this, and you've got to do it relatively accurately. I just use a teaspoon. Um, and you'll see that it's, it's not that accurate at all. But I've done this twice now with a teaspoon, um, and both times it's hardened in a day perfectly. So I'm going to do it again. So you don't need to um, you don't need to use you don't need to use uh, you don't need to shake the bottle. Sorry. And you also it says on here to use a brush to level it out to spread it out. But I, you don't need to. It's self leveling anyway. I don't. I just don't think that that's a necessary step. So I'm just going to mix this now. It's from behind the camera, so I'm hoping I don't actually, you know, totally stuff this up. So for these pedals, I probably do, um, I might do maybe seven teaspoons, I reckon should be enough. Actually, that's probably too much. Maybe five of each. So two. So I'm just trying to get that flat as I'm doing it. Three. A flat teaspoon worth. I made a pretty big mess of that, actually. It's difficult from behind the camera here. So obviously you don't want any of that hardener going into the other bottle. It probably wouldn't matter at that ratio, but you wouldn't want to do it, so try and avoid it. That's why I'm not touching it. So now you've got to mix the hell out of it because you've got to make sure that it's mixed very well. And once it's mixed, the hardener's um, in, the hardener will be mixed properly with the resin and it, and it will it will start to harden. But it takes quite some time. I've found in my experience at least a couple hours before it even starts to go sort of tacky. It takes about 24 hours to go fully um, 
to go fully hard if you've if you've mixed it properly. If you haven't mixed it properly, it'll take longer, like I said before. So mix it until the pain starts shooting up your arm, and then you know you've done it. You've done it long enough. Make sure you get right in the corners and get it all mixed. You wouldn't want some of this resin or hardener not being mixed because you might you may end up with a with a wet spot or something. I don't know. I've never had that happen, but it could happen. So about a minute you want to mix it for. It'll go cloudy when you've um, when you've given it a really good mix, which is what this has done. I don't know if you can see in the cup, but it's starting to go cloudy. Oh man, arms hurting. All right, so that's that. So all we've got to do now is put it on the top of the pedal. I'm literally, I'm literally doing this with my arms wrapped around the camera. It's quite difficult. So if I do a really messy job, you have to apologize. Uh, I'll have to um, apologize for that. So I'm just going to fill up these holes first because they use quite a bit of um, a bit of the um, resin. So just just fill up the hole and then just whack it on until you think you've got enough. Spread it out. Just use the back of the spoon up to the edge. Just be careful around the edge. Don't go over the edge because you'll get dripping. That's what we're trying to avoid. And then when you get sort of near the edge, grab the toothpick and start spreading it out just to, just till you get towards the edge. It's going to level itself out. So all you got to do is get it to the edge and then leave it. So, sorry, I had to move the camera. It was becoming just far too difficult to actually level this out properly. You have to, you have to get close to it and pay attention to what you're doing. So, um, that's what I'm doing now. But hopefully, you can still see what I'm doing. And I also think I put a little bit too much on. So, I just used the, used the, um, this stick and just pick some up like you would like picking up fairy floss just you know wrap it around and just dump it on the um on the other enclosure in the background there which um i'll use for that one so now i'm just flattening out the edge here just getting it to the edge and that's it you don't want it to go over the edge you just want it to go up to the edge because remember it's going to level itself out you don't have you, you just it doesn't need your help <laughs> it doesn't need your help um, to be level on the edge, it will level itself out. So just go over it a couple of times just to try and um, get it to the right spot and then you're done. Now, as you can see, it's full of, well, you might be able to see, it's full of bubbles. So the way we get rid of that, I did also notice I've got a drip on the side there, so I might just clean that up before I do the bubbles. See, so also, as you can see, you're probably starting to see, it's a messy process. So can you imagine doing this on the sides of the pedal as well? It becomes, it just becomes, uh, it's, it's just become such a juggling act. Um, you've just got stuff everywhere. It's become so messy. I had one drip off that and I've just fixed it. Well, I'm hoping that will be all the drips that I get. So to get rid of those bubbles, you can either use, apparently you can use a straw and just blow. Let me get that in the middle for you. That's not in the middle. There we are. You can just use a straw and just blow, um, just blow warm air onto it and it'll, and it will fix it. But I'm not going to do that. I've got a propane lighter which I'm going to just run over and you'll see all the bubbles disappear. Remember it gets hot so you can't do this for too long in any one burst. Just do a little bit and then leave it and the lighter will get hot too. So Just do one small section at a time. Don't concentrate on one area too much because you will, you might burn what's underneath the, um, you know, like your paintwork or something. It's going to get hot. I mean, it's a propane torch, so just be careful and don't burn yourself. And if you're a kid or you're too young to be doing this, then don't do it. So there you go. You can see all the, a lot of the bubbles are already gone. Just get rid of the few little bits left and don't go too close with the lighter too. I'm probably getting a little bit close there. Got a couple of stubborn bubbles that won't go. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Now's the time to stop mucking about with it and just seal it up. So I've got a lid for it. Put the lid on. Get that out first. 
put the lid on, and then I usually I'm going to stick this on the um, on the ducted heating so it warms up and it'll 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 um it'll it'll dry quicker. But if you can't get a perfect seal, don't put it on the on the ducted heating because you'll get dust and stuff in it. So do you want to see another one? Of course you do. Here is the second one. I've got so much epoxy here. For that that ten table that ten teaspoons was far too much. I've got a heap of it in there. Um, I could probably, I reckon I could do another pedal easily uh, with what I've got left. So you, as you can see, you really don't need much of this stuff. It goes a long way. So it's just the same process. Just put it on, spread it out as best you can, just to get to the edge. I've never done a 1590A either. So it should be a learning experience for both of us. So that looks pretty good to me. Another tip just while I'm doing this, I, I was thinking of, um, just don't obsess over it too much. Remember that you just kind of, you're just trying to trying to assist it to level out. You're not leveling it out yourself. So I'm just pulling the the resin to the corners, um, so it has kind of like a passage to flow out, and then it will stop. It should stop unless you put too much on. It'll stop and it won't drip. I haven't got any drips on this one at all. And like I said earlier you would barely know that it's even that I haven't even epoxied the sides. I just don't think it's necessary. And the same thing with micromanaging. Don't focus too hard on if you've got some bubbles that won't go. Don't focus too hard on it. If you get end up with a couple of bubbles, that's fine. If you set fire to the resin, that's a problem. And you can do that if you if you if you just just go on like uh, on the one spot. I've actually done that before and it's gone and there's a flame that's come up and I blew it out and it was okay but you obviously don't want to be doing that, so don't focus too much on the one spot. It should just take a quick whisk across the front, or maybe a couple, and that's it. The propane lighter seems to get rid of the um, bubbles very quickly. So that looks pretty good to me, so I'm just going to put something over the top of that now and stick it on the... Um, on the uh, on the ducted heating with the other one, and ho hopefully tomorrow they should be done, and I'll do a little clip uh, of the finished product. So it's been a couple of days now, and the um, epoxy's uh, still a little bit wet, but to uh, give you an idea of, of what the final result looks like anyway, I did actually have an issue, um, and it's a new issue, I haven't had this one before. I didn't put enough epoxy on top, so um, the, the epoxy pulled kind of in the middle and left the edges, there was practically nothing on the edges, but I fixed it, and um, <clears throat> to do that is pretty straightforward, just added more on top, you can give it a light sand, which I did, but probably wasn't so necessary, um, but they recommend to just give it a light sand with a, with a probably a fine sandpaper, like 300 or something, um, uh, just to allow the second coat to, to attach um, to the first coat, um, so I did that, and unfortunately, I actually, um, as you can see on the, as you might be able to see on the corner there, took a bit of the paint off when I sanded it, um, because, like I was saying, on the corners there was a whole, there's a whole bunch of um, epoxy missing across around, uh, like a border around the outside. I just didn't put enough on. Um, the third one I did, I actually did put enough on, and that turned out fine. Actually, I'll just grab it. It turned out pretty good first go, so I, I put enough on that one, but I just didn't put quite enough on those two. I've never had that problem before, because I've always been pretty liberal with it, I just slapped it on, but for some reason I was being a little bit tight this time around, um, and it didn't, um, yeah, it didn't, didn't, didn't give a good enough coverage. On the second coat, also another tip, um, I actually decided to thin it a little bit this time, and I, and I put the um, bottles of uh, epoxy in some... Uh, in some warm water just to make them flow a little bit easier and that helped too. And when you do, when you do um, first put, when you do put, put a, a wet coat on, just check the sides um, as well about half an hour after you've done it, just make sure there's no drips and if there's drips just wipe the drips up as well. I forgot to mention that in the, um, in the uh, uh, previous part of this video. Um, so that's pretty much it. They, they, they are not so much tacky but just soft at the moment. Um, so I, you don't want to muck around with it. Um, too much while they're soft because you'll if I, I've, I've, I've got one where I've got my fingerprint on it because I pushed on it just to check if it was um, soft or not and it was soft and then the print kind of stayed on it so uh, it's so tempting just to muck around with it you know because they look so good 
um, but just just resist. In fact, I'd go as far as saying if you want to be absolutely sure, leave them in the sun for a week and then drill. Not a quick. This it, it's a it's a process that requires patience. Um, it's up. The patience is, uh, as I've said in other videos, is not one of my strengths. Uh, I tend to tend to rush things, which is why I kind of like um, powder coating because it's so fast. Um, but you know, it, it, look at I mean seriously, look at the front of that. It just looks it looks fantastic. So you'll see the final result of that pedal once I've put it together, um, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to be putting in the Rawley Well. Um, the Axis Fuzz that he's got, I forgot what it's called. That's right, Voodoo Return Fuzz. I thought a fuzz would look pretty good in, in that sort of retro kind of box. So uh, the Voodoo Return Fuzz is going to go in that one, um, which is a silicon fuzz. Um, and this will be my, um, my Whipper Clipper with the um, Gain Mod, um, which will be the second the second knob on the bottom there. Um, and this I haven't decided what I'm going to put in yet. Um, and it's best to drill first because it's going to be it's going to be interesting trying to get the drill holes around a design as opposed to the other way around. Um, yeah, you want to drill first. Uh, but yeah, that's it. So I hope you hope you got something out of this video. I hope it sort of primed you for it. Um, down the track, I might do like a little update as I get better at it. I've uh, probably only done about 15, 10 or 15 so far, so I'm not an expert on it. Um, and yeah, if you're new to if you're new to epoxying, I'd recommend doing it this way, the way that I'm doing it. It's much easier than trying to get the sides, uh, the sides done. You might get turned off just because they end up very drippy and it's, it's very time-consuming process. You've got to keep coming back every sort of 15 minutes and, and wiping it with a brush until it starts to dry. And um, it's just it's a it's very it's very laborious um, process to get the sides done. Whereas you know this one. You can't. You don't even notice that the sides aren't done half the time. You it's, you it, you look at the top of the pedal, not the sides. So anyway, it, it's it's um it's a quick way to do it. So it's and it's a, I think it's a good introductory introductory way of doing it too. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. And um and thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.